Can you imagine a world where the daily schedule of baboons is at your disposal? I mean, a world where you know when to dispose of your waste because you know when the baboons wake up and when they go to bed. Just as we avoid traffic at trash hour, imagine using the time of activity peak of baboons to have baboon monitors on guard or even to close our windows. Now, as we all know that the relationship between wildlife and their environment, baboons inclusive have been a challenging one. But also, challenging have been the relationship between humans and Chakma baboons, especially here in Southern Africa. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but almost everyone who is here today have had their fair experience of this. Yeah, I know, it's really frustrating. But this is because there is no more enough space for these animals. We have destroyed their homes through agricultural expansion, urban development, etc. Now with also climate change threatening these animals, they need to strike a balance between the time they spend foraging, resting, socializing, whilst also avoiding heat stress and predation. Now, one would wonder, why chakma baboons? Really, like, why study baboons? Well, because they're simply cool. <laughs> okay, these guys are smart. They're adaptable. Well, if I'm being honest, a little bit cheeky for their own good sometimes. But in as much as they get in our nerves, they are very critical in the ecosystem. I like to call them the forest maintenance crew, you know, with seed dispersal, soil aeration, providing nutrients for the predators such as lions and leopards. But here is what really makes them more interesting. They are an ecologically successful omnivorous, non-human primate species that is not really well studied but have managed to colonize and survive the challenges in almost all the biomes in South Africa and Southern Africa at large, ranging from the hot and dry deserts via the savannas to the wet and cold forest. Super cool, as I've said. These characteristics is then what really made us uh, take them as the best model for us to understand if behavior can really be driven by environmental conditions. So we then asked it for some camera trip data from Panthera, Kepler Trust, Snapshot Safari. Thanks to them, we ended up having a very large data set of 29 sites. As you can see from this map, they are ranging from the most southern South Africa to the most northern Zimbabwe. But then the majority of our sites were in the savanna biome. We also had five other biomes, that is the forest, the Namakaru, the grassland, the thicket, and the fine boss. So, um, from this data set, we then ran some fancy statistics to be able to compare activity between sites and also to see how things like temperature, food availability, as well as predation was affecting baboons' activity. And here is what we found. So the distribution of activity of baboons varies within and among biomes. For example, this is Italy in the grassland. You would see that baboons here are mostly active in the cooler morning and late afternoon hours of the day. And at midday, they are taking a rest, which is presumably the hottest part of the day. We also uh, observed a similar pattern in Zingela in the thicket. But then in the forest biome here in Garden Hood, where there is a uh, plentiful of resources, you would see that baboons are resting a lot. 
similar to Overberg area in the Feinbos. Now, in the Namakaru, which I would like to call the desert of South Africa, baboons here are active throughout the day. There is no rest in Africa. <laughs> this is because they need to utilize as much time as they can get, compensating with the little resources that they found in that place for them to fulfill their energy requirements. Now the savanna is the same biome, but as I've mentioned, our sites were spread along a lengthy latitudinal gradient. You would see that the activity patterns here were different depending on the site. The Tswalu, which is very arid and dry, had similar activities to the Namakaru, and the rest of the sites had different distributions of activity. This then drove us to our next question to see if really geographical location mattered. So we tested activity level estimate against latitude, and here's what we found. Baboons in the south are most active than baboons in the north. So they are decreasing their activity by approximately 2.84% as we move from the south to the north. And the highest activity level was found in garden route. Then the least activity level was found in Venetia up in the Limpopo, and the rest of the biomes were in between. Now, we also found that baboons are remarkably consistent when it comes to their bedtime. I mean, they wake up at the same time in the south as they do in the north. And they also go to bed at the same time, regardless of their geographical location. Well, if I'm being honest, I think these guys are even better at sticking at a routine more than I am. <laughs> so now we then downloaded some temperature data in the same locations, and here's what we found. No matter what period of the day it is, for as long as the temperature is high, baboons reduce their activity. Well, I think this is a smart move because they just need to chill out and relax to avoid sunburns, perhaps. But in cooler areas, so this means that in cooler areas, the baboons are increasing their activity at dawn and dusk and night for them to keep warm. But then in warmer areas, especially at midday and afternoon, which are the hottest parts of the day, they then try to avoid heat stress by reducing their activity by approximately 7%. Now, food. To baboons, food is a big deal. When there is plenty of wheat, they just chill out, conserving their energy for other important tasks like, um, I don't know, maybe planning their next raid to your home. <laughs> so we used the rainfall data. Rainfall, as we know, drives the resource availability. And we have found that in places that receive less rainfall, the baboons here are forced to extend their activity to dawn, dusk, and even at night for them to be able to fulfill their energy requirements. This is then forcing them to derive from their non diurnal niche. And in places where food is plenty, then they do not need to move a lot and they just chill out. Now, uh, predators such as lions, spotted hyenas, and leopards really get baboon moving, especially at night. As you can see from this plot, uh, I think they will be avoiding to be breakfast. So they are left with no option that to call out, mob, and run for their life. But then, what does all of this mean? How do we relate to this? Now, understanding the behavior of baboons can help us coexist peacefully. Now that we know when they are mostly active and what drives their dial activity patterns, then we can come together and provide non-lethal temporal deterrence methods like securing our food storages, uh, employing and guarding our crops, 
avoiding disposing waste in the terms of peak of activity of baboons. Also, this model can then give us uh, the power and evidence-based framework to inform the wildlife conservation policymakers, especially now in the face of climate change. They say that it takes a village to raise a child. It also begins with me and you and takes a community, a country, even a whole continent for us to be able to solve this problem of baboons and be able to conserve them and coexist with them. Therefore, I ask to the brave mindsets that are here today that we can come together and work towards achieving this goal. Thank you.